Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, we're continuing on with our two-part video and we're going to break down some effects seen in Eric's Sweden video and also his cinematic Switzerland video. So let's dive straight in. Another really cool effect here is a camera effect where he's tracked the camera to an object in the scene. So we see this sort of effect commonly used where the camera is tracked to uh, someone's face or a body part as they're running. And it can give you a really interesting look. Here, what he's done is he's done that same sort of effect, but he's basically following the paddle here of the kayaker and as the camera, and he could have done this using uh, a point tracker inside of After Effects, so like the 2D tracker, or you could even just do it using manual keyframing. So he could have used the, he could have basically scaled in and then created a position keyframe and just followed that camera around. If the movement's not too complicated, it's probably a faster and easier option just to use um, a manual keyframing. Otherwise you can just use the 2D camera tracker, zoom in a little bit and then you lock your camera to that perspective. This is a really interesting effect where he's got the DJI logo basically cut out of this bird's eye shot from his drone. So a way of doing this is grabbing two shots. One is a bird's eye shot here of the kayak sitting on the water, which is most likely I'd say what this shot is behind. And then over the top, he's got this bird's eye shot, which is a bird's eye here of the land. And then he's used the logo as basically a track mat which he's then put over the top of this top layer. And that creates basically like a cutout, which you can see through to that layer behind. Something to also to note though, that that would give you very straight edge lines. So to get around those straight edges, what you'd have to do is also manually mask out or overlay by cutting out elements from the original shot and overlaying them over the top. So you could have done some masking and overlaid those over the edges just to make it more believable, right? To make it look more realistic. So this part here in particular is a really good example of where he's probably gone and manually masked out that edge to create this uneven edge here. He's also got, if you look in this section, he's got these little trees here, which are kind of sticking out over the water. So again, it could have used some feathering techniques by drawing a mask with some feather on it and overlaying that over the top um, to, to recreate that same effect. This is a really nice transition from this log splitting where we've got a mask that's been drawn down the middle here. So it then creates a nice transition point for the camera to zoom through. So we've got a digital zoom through that mask so then we can get rid of that top shot and then we've got a shot underneath, which is what you're looking at here. These fire embers here, I'd say are, are definitely an overlay effect that is also used. And it just helps tie that overall transition together really nicely. Cause it looks like we've got a bit of a glow coming from a fire, which is underneath the shot here. So just out of frame, it could be a fire there. And there's also a fire going on in the background here and these embers have basically been overlaid over the top so i'd say these are real embers but they're used as an overlay effect and he's continued that all the way through into this shot and again it's just a really clever way of using those overlay elements to kind of tie all these shots together and it looks really cinematic here we've got another really interesting transition where these berries are moving from one shot through to the next. So here we've got a problem where we have to remove or cut out the berries. Now you could manually go through and mask all those berries, but I can see that this has a green background in this original shot. So this is very green and these are red. So there's, a very, there's enough of a color difference to be able to use a color key to remove that background from or separate these, be these berries out from the background. And then he's done a transition basically between the two shots. So he's just done basically a, a cut straight over the top. He's also got a little bit of a motion tile. We can see here where we've got two parts on either side that are being mirrored. 
So that's where you've got a motion tile. The reason he's using a motion tile here in particular is because he would have basically, this would have been the, the top of the frame of this shot that you're looking at now. And he would have zoomed in very slightly on that, but he needs more than the original shot has. So you have to use a motion tile where you can have a digital camera that pans over that. And that just follows the motion from the original shot. And then you're left with these berries that are falling that have been cut out from the original shot. So as the camera is basically panning down over the berries, they continue to fall over the top of the second shot because you have moved the background now. So that's how that transition works. And then he's got an overlay transition here from the original shot into the shot or a close up of this raven. And he's got some overlay effects. Interestingly, on that raven's eye, you can see it's got a light that's interacting with its eye. If you look very closely, you can see that that's an artificial light and this is a window here. So wherever he got this shot of the ra raven, most likely this is stock footage. The person who shot this close up of this eye did it in an inside environment where they had a light that they could set up. Yeah, you know, it's just something interesting to note when you're looking really closely for details in these sort of shots. So moving over to the second video, it opens with this old eight millimeter film effect. where We've got kind of like these film burn effect over the top. We've got what looks to be like film over the edges. This could just be um, an overlay. I'm sure that there would be a lot of effects that are already basically pre-made that you could drag and drop over the top to get a similar sort of look. But knowing Eric, he's most likely created this himself using um, an, uh, an actual image of a film. And then he's basically put some edge burns on it, given that this old sort of uh, grainy look by adding some Venetian blind, um, adding some grain and some color distortion here kind of make this entire effect. We've got a really nice transition here through the paper into this scene. If we just look at this, one way of doing this is to take the second shot. So again, just like that technique we were talking about before, we've taken the second frame. So we've ended on this shot. He's then drawn some mask lines that go along the edges. And then he's kind of created this this drawing effect over the top. So he could have created these mask lines, then applying the stroke effect over the top, you can highlight these edges. Then you can kind of colorize them to match the piece of paper. And you can see as it transitions through, we get that transition of the mask effect. Another option is to use some sort of filter in Photoshop or something like that, that takes a photo and it makes it look like it's been hand drawn. Another way that most likely the way he, he could have done it is just by hand drawing or tracing over the top of the original image. So he could have taken um, a printout of that, a screenshot of that second image, overlaid it over the top and traced over the top using a pencil on a piece of paper to get that uh, that look like it's been hand drawn. Because we get these little bits uh, that have been sort of colored in by hand here, which really kind of tie the whole thing together. Then he could have just filmed it using his camera over the top and then done a digital zoom all the way through and using some masking techniques fade through the different shots. So there's a few different ways he could have done that there. He does these transitions really well. These are like his signature transitions here that he uses through all of his videos. His camera placement and the way he animates digital cameras is really good. He's one of the best I've personally seen, um, just because I know how hard it is to get those really realistic movements and he does it really, really well. I mean, he's had a lot of practice doing it and it really shows in all of his videos that he makes. But basically he's overlaying these two shots and he's using a digital camera over the top to kind of transition between them. You don't even necessarily have to use a digital camera. You could be using a null and basically pairing it, parenting it between those two uh, video layers and then moving them over the top. But ultimately 
you know, it's the same sort of effect, whether you create a digital camera or not, you're essentially creating a digital camera, whether you create a 3D camera or not inside of After Effects, because you're manipulating the perspective of your view, which is essentially adding a, a camera to the shot. He just does them really, really well, and they're very smooth. This is an effect that looks really cool, which is this brush paint on effect. I've done a brush effect for showing you how to do a write on effect, which is using uh, text, but this is using a brush stroke effect over the top. So there's two ways that come to mind when doing this particular effect. One is by taking this cutout of this mountain because it, it looks to me like this is from uh, another shot. So we've got one shot here of this valley and then he's taken this shot here or cut it out of another shot and overlaid it over this particular clip. And then what he's done is, he, is he's basically used um, a mask to basically create like brush, brush strokes over the top and then you could apply something like the stroke effect over the top of that and scale the brush size right up or scale that right up as it's animating on. That creates basically like a mat, which as it's animating on, it reveals that layer behind. You could also do the same thing by manually drawing a mask over, over that. It does look like it kind of has a brush kind of style effect, so, you know, that could be that he's grabbed an image of a brush stroke and he's animating that over the top and creating a solid sort of black trail behind that, which reveals the layer underneath. That also leads into my second theory, which is just using a straight up black and white uh, track mat. So exactly how we create a, a Luma mat, we would create a black and white image of basically a video of say like a brush stroke, which could be black as it's being painted onto a white piece of paper. You then overlay that over a video clip and using the track mat uh, feature, you can basically link those two together so that when it's animating on, it's revealing that layer underneath. Now I showed you how to do something a little bit similar in uh, a tutorial I did quite a long time ago, but I'd really love uh, to, to make a tutorial specifically on this. And I'm really hoping that will be my next tutorial on how to do uh, a very similar style effect. Another cool effect here is this one that's flying through this scene. This is done by using cutouts and using what a technique called 2D projection mapping. I've got uh, a big tutorial on how to do 2D projection mapping. It is quite time consuming and you have to spend a bit of time doing it, but the results can look really good. You take a still frame out of your video, you cut out all the elements and you essentially layer them in a three dimensional space. And using a 3D camera, you move that camera through that scene and it gets this effect like it's flying through the scene. The more layers you have, the more realistic this looks. But the slow part is you have to basically fill in all the gaps. So where you're getting movement between this layer here and the background, you have to essentially paint all of this out. Because when you take your shot, it doesn't know that you're going to do this. So you've only, you haven't got any information behind that. So you have to use the clone stamp to basically fill in what is behind this mountain here. So there's a breakdown of these effects seen in both of Eric's videos. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and techniques along the way. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out very similar videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.